So it seems as though Goofball is finally getting to see what it feels like to truly be alone and nobody really messing with you. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Season 10, Episode 6 of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Like I said, the goofball of the group is actually finally getting to see what it's like when people ain't fucking with you. And you are singled out and you're put by yourself. They were at that dinner table, remember last week, when Nene and um, Portia were going at it back and forth, back and forth. And then when it all broke out, everybody left the dinner table except for Sheree. So Portia was stuck at the table with Sheree crying and carrying on and everybody else left with Nene. See, it was cute to you. Oh, fuck them. Oh, you don't care nothing about Kenya. Oh, you don't give a shit about Cynthia. Oh, you don't care about Nene. You don't care. You had all the, in the can, you know, you'd have had all this falling out with everybody. And I'm not saying that you were at fault by yourself and all of it, but you've had all of this falling out. And you said you were okay with being alone. See, everybody's not okay with being alone. You talked a good game about my Karen. Oh, fuck them. Everybody can't live that. Now, I'm a bitch that can live it. I ain't got no problem with it. Fuck them. I like me. I like being with me more than me being with anybody else. So I'm cool with that. But everybody is not cool with that. And as we can see in this, you're not cool with that. And that's why you're sitting around crying. And stuck with Sheree, of all people. This bone-carrying, bonehead bitch. You stuck with Sheree. Anyway, whatever. So then after that... It was just a constant thing of you apologizing, which got on my nerves. That's the girl, so now. Anyway, um, next day, they go on this little trolley ride. Um, Kenya's talking about her grandmother and shows them the little video. She has this video footage. Um, they were going to do a montage at the funeral for her grandma, and um, she showed them. And, of course, Kenya got a little emotional. Then Portia gets emotional, talking about just thinking about her uncle or whatever. And, um, you know, nobody really is featuring you. A lot of the people on the bus ain't really featuring you. So you, again, seeking attention, gets up and she walks up to the front of the trolley and she's sitting there crying. Well, Cynthia gets up and goes and consoles her. And then Cynthia tells her, and I said, you're better than me because it just wouldn't happen, tells her about how she needs to be basically ready to go ahead and kiss Candy's ass. No, no, I'm sorry. It was actually, it was Nene's ass that she was telling her she had to kiss. Basically telling her that she had to acknowledge the things that Nene had done for her and then uh, then basically apologize to her and basically kiss her ass the way she did for her to get moving on. And I'm like, I, now that I, I just couldn't see because that's fine that you played the fool for Nene, but I wouldn't play the fool for Nene. I would tell Nene to kiss my ass and keep it moving. That All that shit, Nene, uh -uh. no, I wouldn't do it. Now that I wouldn't do. I would not kiss Nene. Nene is a stinking ass. She's really crazy and really thinks that people do have to kiss her ass. I would not kiss Nene's ass. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. Now, I probably would apologize to Candy about what I did because I, well, I would have never done anything like that. But I, I definitely wouldn't. And then I wouldn't be looking for a friendship from Candy because the way you went at Candy, I doubt that you all will ever actually be friends anymore because she will never trust you again. And if she does, she's a fool. But anyway, yeah, it was Nene that she was basically telling her you need to kiss her ass so you can get back on track with her. Man, fuck Nene and her old crazy wig wearing herself. Anyway, 
they they then decide that they going to decide to do this mock wedding for Kenya. And I said, oh boy, let's see how this goes. Now remember, Kenya did the the divorce party for um Cynthia, and Cynthia got all upset. Said, let's see if you can take your own taste of your own medicine. But Kenya, strangely enough, was a really good sport with it. Was like, okay, whatever. She played the game with it and all that. And I said, here they go again. I said, people gonna be mad because here we go with a whole room full of the gays. And they went out and got the gays to fill the seats. I said, they gonna be mad at y'all again, child. I said, Lord have mercy, just a mess. Anyway, and when that was going on, then Portia goes in. And apologizes to Candy again. Pulls Candy to the side, apologizes her again. And I'm like, this is just crazy because you apologize to Candy, and Candy's looking at you like, I am not interested in anything that you are saying, absolutely nothing. And I understand Candy's point because I, I don't think I would accept apology from Portia. I would want nothing to do with Portia. Portia's toxic. The way she went at Candy, y'all don't ever need to be friends no more. She cannot be trusted. But whatever, so she apologizes again. Candy basically kind of rubbed it, just like played, paid her desk for the most part. She's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And they did actually speak, you know, on the little trolley and stuff, but... Well, not the trolley. The next day they went on a train ride to Napa Valley, and they talked on the train, but... No, I wouldn't. Not with, mm -mm. Portia can't be trusted. She's a snake. I wouldn't be bothered with her. Um, Kenya got on my nerves. The whole train ride talking about her husband. Whatever, Kenya. It's like, girl, who cares? And she was going on talking and Candy was sitting there. And I said, child, Candy was sitting there like she was hearing the womp, 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 like on the Charlie Brown show, honey, when the parents be talking. I said, girl, please. And then Kenya is talking and Portia is picking through what Kenya's talking about. And I don't know if y'all caught this, but I caught it. She's picking through all the things of basically kind of telling Kenya, don't thrust yourself into being so subservient to your husband. Excuse me, you were. You were. And they keep flashing back all these things that you did with Cordell. She's basically... All the things they wrote her back about, Portia's telling her this is the things that she's learning that she needs to do with her husband. And I'm like, Portia, ain't nobody taking no advice from you because you were sitting around eating 10 miles of Cordell shit. Anyway, mess. Um, but the thing that I do realize is that this is what's kind of not right. Candy, now you don't want to really be bothered with Portia, but now that you, you know, she keeps apologizing and then you will be social sociable with her, but when you're sociable with her, it's a constant read session. You keep throwing jabs at her. And I said, are, I was wondering, are y'all picking up on that? Leave it down in the comments. Do you pick up on the fact that every other thing that Candy says to Portia is a jab of some sort? Or she's busting out laughing at her in a crowd when she says something. That ain't cute. That ain't cool. That's shady as hell. Whatever. Anyway, they get up there to Napa Valley, and they meet Jean Charles, honey, and he was just as fresh, and uh, he was their guide through Napa Valley and teaching them about the wine and how it's made and all this with the grapes. Child, then he goes on his feet, and them those nasty grapes. They're like, can I eat one of the grapes? Who wants to eat grapes off of a tree that ain't been washed? I ain't seen a squirt bottle, a rag, nothing. Y'all just eating these grapes off the vine. You do know that grape vines are filled with spiders. You know that, right? Child, I won't be playing arachnid in my mouth, honey. That's disgusting. Anyway, and then Marlo, what the hell she giving? Oh, deep throat nasty, honey. I said, look at Linda Lovelace, honey. She would think the guy was like feeding them a grape. No, Marlo going to suck down the hole. I said, girl... Like she was in a scene from Caligula. I said, if you don't get your ass somewhere, Marlo, and sit down, troublemaking whore. That was a mess. Anyway, so later on that night, you know, Kenya ended up leaving. She had to go so she could go to the, um, because they stomped grapes and all that. Kenya left to go so she could go home to do the funeral and all that. Cynthia and the girls were all sitting around the table, and the girls started talking about Kenya. Cynthia got upset. She was taken up for Kenya, and then she got upset and got up and walked away from the table. 
Nene went out after her shady self. And she told her, she's like, you know, I don't, no, I don't understand why Kenya did what she did. No, I don't know why I wasn't invited to the wedding, but I don't want to sit around and listen to them talk about Kenya. So I said, I understood that a little bit. But then that Cynthia, honey, I said, girl, Cynthia, you know, they could really flip your switch, honey. After Nene talked to her, then her flip, her switch got flipped. She goes back and sits at the table. Marlo then basically apologized for making Cynthia feel bad about talking about her friend and everything. But then her flip, her switch was flipped by her good friend Nene. Did y'all catch it? And now here goes Cynthia going to flip again. She went, she's like, I don't know why that I didn't get invited. And, and I did feel some kind of way about not being invited. I said, Jumping over the fence again, honey. Nene is the puppeteer. She is the puppeteer. Now, definitely understand, because you should feel some kind of way about the fact that you wasn't good enough to come to the wedding. You feel some kind of way. But Nene flipped your switch. You was handling it on your own until Nene said, bye, Cynthia. Anyway, all right, that was it. We'll catch y'all next week with this shit. All right, later. <laughs>